Hey guys, you want to create a two-step, super easy marble? I'm going to show you how to do it. 24 by 43. So if you're using Stone Coat Countertop, which is the product I use, and your product is a little cloudy, don't worry about that. When you torch it, it will be crystal clear. Okay guys, I'm fixing to show you the easiest, fastest way to create a very simple marble type effect. If you're a DIYer and you wanna get in and out as smoothly and simply as possible, guys, this is the easiest way to do it. We're gonna start off with stone coat countertop, three ounces per square foot of the epoxy. And I've just tinted it with black opaque dye from Illumilite. I didn't add any metallics. I didn't add anything that's gonna give a sparkle because this finish is actually gonna look better once we finish and put a matte sheen on it. And with that, we're gonna use the ultimate top coat. Because the temperature in my shop is about 70, it's a little cool outside, I'm going to heat the material up just a little bit before I trial it out. When I trial, I wanna mix it up just one more time to be sure everything's mixed up correctly. I don't get any sticky spots. And then I'm gonna start dragging it along the surface. I'm not gonna push it over the edge quite yet. The reason I use a trial is I want to ensure that I'm getting the um, same amount of material across the whole finish. And they are available on my website. I really like these trials because when you're done, you can set it up and it's gonna just run down and you don't clog up your teeth. Okay, now uh, you can chop at this stage. I just choose to use my hands. I like to be able to fill the material make sure there's no uh, little particles in there. And I also just like the way the material feels and I can get it over my edges and underneath the bottom. I can also make sure when I use my hands, I can feel if there's any dry spots and I can make sure those dry spots are covered up. All right, I'm gonna torch it. In many of my videos, I suggest that we let the epoxy set up for about 20 minutes. This is the opposite. I want to do this when my epoxy is pretty fresh because I'm going to kind of utilize that movement, that self-leveling of the epoxy to my advantage. So we're going to come in. This is a two-step process, guys. Once you get your epoxy on, you've got two simple steps. That's it. I take white gloss paint. And I'm going to get my hand with some epoxy on it. You don't want to do this unless you have epoxy on your hand. Because when I go to spray the paint on my glove, if I don't already have epoxy on my hand, all I'm doing is painting my glove. By having epoxy, it's going to help it to soften it out. All right, so I'm going to get white. And then I'm going to, that's all I'm going to do right there. Now, this is going to be a preference and how much white you want on your surface. If you want your finish to be very soft, very, very simple with just a little bit of white, you're just gonna run your hand across it very, very softly in just a few times. So I'm just gonna come over here. Now, as I touch that surface, let me show you what I'm doing. I'm not pushing and sliding my hand across so that I'm moving a lot of material. I'm just taking my hand and barely touching. I'm gonna stand back, look at it. If I want it very simple, I'm gonna leave it alone. If I wanna add a little more contrast, I'm gonna grab some more paint. Remember, you can't take paint away, you can always add it. So start, start off very, very simple. Okay, now we're gonna let this set, watch it as it does its thing. The spray paint is gonna start reacting with the epoxy 
and you're gonna get some just really cool looking designs. Don't rush this, guys. Don't come in and say, oh, I wanna fix this or I wanna fix that. Let the epoxy do its thing for a little bit. Let it, let it play. If you see a few bubbles, you can hit it. Also, if you have the ability, if you're doing this on a countertop or a piece of furniture, that's the size that you can uh, handle and move and twist, now would be the time to do it because now we're really gonna make those lines look organic and soft. If you can't move or tilt the um, actual project that you're gonna be doing, don't tilt your sample board because you won't be able to recreate that exactly um, when you get ready to do the real thing. All right, so now I'm just very lightly gonna tilt. I don't wanna tilt fast because I don't want this to move a lot. I just want very subtle movement. If you need it to move a little quicker, maybe if it's kind of cool in here and you're not really getting it to move as fast as you would like, heat it up just a little bit. Okay guys, I am loving this. I haven't even touched it. It's been sitting here about 15 minutes. Now what we can do is if we get really picky, we can come in here and little drips of paint, maybe that doesn't look as natural, we can address those. Um, I'm just gonna kinda come in here and touch these two little pieces right here. I'm just gonna kinda touch it and move it out with my finger. Couple of little spots here. So I prefer not to hit it with a heat gun because I love what it's doing on its own. But if you wanna soften the lines out even more and give it more of a soft marble look, you can use a heat gun, and that's what we'll do to one little corner over here. You can even take a line like this and really make it marbly by manipulating your heat gun and going kind of in a circle. Now we've taken that line and we've softened it and given it more of a marble type of movement. This you can see is very soft. This over here we haven't touched and look at the, the hard, distinct, contrasting lines. So it's just really what look are you going for? All right, so I told you there was two steps. This was the first step. You can stop right here. This is gorgeous. You can leave it alone. This could be a finish on its own. But I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of alcohol and I'm gonna cause even more fracturing on top. So this is just plain isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna set my sprayer to be a little more than a drip, but not quite a super fine mist. Now, if you want really tiny fractures, really tiny cells, you can do a little bit of a finer mist. I wouldn't do a super fine mist because then your cells are so tiny that they're gonna close back up. All right, and I'm also gonna do this from up high, coming down, not from across the table because I don't want it to shoot out this way. I wanna come from above. All right, so here we go. And I'm just doing a very tiny amount. So this is the area that we hit with a heat gun. And you can see when we add the alcohol to a soft pattern, the cells aren't quite as distinct. If we come over here to where the pattern was a little more uh, distinct in contrast, you can see how the alcohol really does leave a cool pattern. All right, guys, it doesn't get any simpler than this. Love, love, love the simplicity and the ease of this. Now, let me give you some hints on some ways to really kind of take this to the next level. I've done kitchens where we use this type of a finish on the countertops, and then we do the opposite for the island. We'll do the exact same technique, but our background will be white, and we'll run our hand across with a black. Like I said, once this dries, we're gonna put a clear flood coat, let that dry, and then we'll come over it with the ultimate top coat to really knock down this high gloss sheen. And I really think that if when we do that, it's gonna give this kind of a soapstone type of a look. If you like the high gloss, by all means, leave it high gloss because it really is classy. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell for future notifications. And guys, subscribe to my channel. 
So many of you are watching and I appreciate that so much, but I would really love for you to subscribe, help my numbers get up. Okay, so you can get all the products and the tools that I used on my website, along with some more pictures of this, check under the tutorial tab on my website, rk3designs.com. Also check out our online course, onlineepoxypro.com. So guys, you know the drill. Remember, don't be scared, move forward and be creative.